Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. It has been a little bit, but today we are talking about the Curse of Lyarona. Before we get started, if you look on right here in my background, you'll notice I have a Freddy Krueger glove made famously by uh, Instagram user Evil Ash Lives. Uh, if you want to get price for one of these custom Freddy Krueger gloves, which are freaking awesome, they're like screen replicas of the one they they're fit to made robert uh, they're fit you know they're they're fit to made robert england's hand so if you want one of these custom freddy Krueger gloves go follow at evil ash lives and he'll price you on how much they cost and everything um i guarantee you it's probably one of the best purchases i've ever made one of the best or the best probably the best <laughs> i mean it's Look at that thing. That thing looks awesome. I gotta buy a fake hand. She's a beautiful. I gotta buy a fake hand to put it on. Hey, how you been, Sammy? Oh, you know, we're just hanging in there. It's another day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar. I like that. Yeah, what are we, uh, today's uh, the day after Cinco de Mayo. Day after Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Right? Um, so, we saw The Curse of La Llorona a couple weeks ago. Yeah, The Curse of La Chona. Uh, if you didn't watch last week's podcast, we talked about Pet Cemetery that was put up actually way later than it should have been, but... Hey. It's a life happens. Life happens. That's right. So, Sammy, this was one movie you weren't looking forward to watching. That is correct. I was not looking forward to this movie because jump scares and Sam are no go. No go. So we we went to go check out the Curse of Lyarona. It actually got really bad reviews, but I have to say uh, before we get started into this review, this is gonna be spoilers. By the way, it does say that in the title. Spoilers. So. If you guys are uh, no, if you don't want to no spoil us for this, uh, you've been warned. But um, I really enjoyed this movie. I actually, I'm not gonna lie, I did. It was pretty good. No, I, I'm not. I, I'm not gonna lie either. I was entertained. I was on the edge of my seat. I was scared. But mm, they could have done more. They could have done a lot. Of, there was a lot of different things they could have done that I wish they would have done. But I was entertained, so I, I can't complain about that. What do you uh, what do you mean by what they could have done more? What did you want to see that was like they could have done more? Well, I just would have liked to see like I was really happy at the intro scene. Yeah. With the idea of like showing the little kids, like she's on the river, and she's like killing the kids or whatever, like her kids. I yeah. loved that. I wanted more of that. I wanted more of like the like like Mexican culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wanted it like I would have loved if they would have just had a little bit more scenes in Mexico. Or, like, done a whole movie in Mexico and then made this, like, a second movie. Like a sequel. Yeah. So you wanted to see, like, her own kind of origin story? No, no, because I, I mean, I think they did an okay job on her origin story. Are you talking about that you, you wanted them to base the movie more out of Mexico than it, it was in America? Yeah, I, I thought and they kind of made it a, a white movie. Which is okay, I mean, because that's what a lot, you know, that's what sells. I, you have a lot, like the lead actress, I don't think she's Latina, um, based upon my understanding of who she is. Um, her name's Linda Car Cardellini, which is, is kind of like Italian, I think. Sounds Italian, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like, you have some like Latino cast. You got, like, Raymond, Raymundo Cruz over here. And then you have, like, Patricia Valesquez. Marisol Ramirez, but like a lot of like the main family was white. Yeah, um, I, 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 so going into this movie, I, my biggest thing, and we said it last week in the Pet Cemetery uh, review when we were talking about reviewing this movie, was that I hoped it tied into the Conjuring universe. Well, yeah, and I was really excited that it did. 
And just even even if that tie was obviously a little small, yeah. with Father Father Perez, Perez. yeah, with Father Perez, it was still cool to be like, okay, like this exists in the same universe. Like yeah. James Wan is kind this of James Wan yeah. kind of conjuring universe. Yeah. Um, it was kind of cool how they tied it in. They talked a little bit about, of course, uh, Father Perez. Uh, right off the bat, I knew he looked familiar. Yeah, you were saying that he looked familiar, so it was like, okay. Yeah, and he comes out in, I think, the first Conjuring or Annabelle. One of them, yeah, you mentioned. Yeah, and so he comes out and he talks about, of course, having um, dealt with this kind of evil before. Yeah, and then we get that little shot of Annabelle. And we get that little shot of him carrying Annabelle out of the church and everything. Um, so I did like how they kind of tied that part in because now we're seeing that Lyorona, I guess, exists with all these other demons. And she's not just like a fairy tale. She's actually... Uh, a cursed demon walking among us. Yeah, it would have been so sick if we got the Warrens. Which I also thought this was really crazy that uh, Elizabeth Warren, that's her name, right? The the woman? The main, yeah. The woman. She died on the, the day the movie got released. Yeah. Which was crazy to me. It's insane, yeah. Um, so we got to see, of course, another Conjuring tie-in, which was really cool. Um, my whole thing was the fact that this movie did tie into The Conjuring, but it was only for, like, a little bit. It was just through Father Perez. Um, and he does talk about, like, I did know, I do know some people who can help out. Yeah, but, but it's going to be a lot. To go through them, it's like a process yeah. and stuff. So that's kind of a way how they wrote them in and out at the same time. Um, I would say this movie had a lot to do, of course, with, like I said, the uh, the, the original, uh, the you know, the old Mexican folktale uh, of La Llorona, the girl who drowned her children. Um, the weeping woman, you know, the weeping for woman, the translation, for the translation, and uh, she does she does this because her husband actually cheats on her, and she was like supposed to be one of the most beautiful women yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, she was supposed to be the most beautiful woman, and her ranchero over there, Mister. Uh, oh, I found someone better. Yeah, he cheats on her, so he, she drowns her children, and then now she's like cursed with all eternity to uh, go find her children. Yeah, yeah, to go find her children because that was the one thing she could take away from him. Yeah, which I think a, the movie does a good job of telling that story because the movie actually revolves around she's going after other people's children throughout the movie, trying to figure, trying to f replace them as her children. Which yeah, no, and I 100 percent agree. I think that was a good choice. I think that was a really good choice to keep it like that. It was a very good choice, um, and you see this a lot throughout the movie with, of course. Um, the first family she takes, which is uh, Patricia Alvarez's uh, kids. Yeah, the, the Alvarez family. Yeah. You, you see that she's kind of going crazy. She locks them in this kind of closet like, okay, what's going on with this lady? Where um, uh, Linda Cardellini's character, uh, Anna, plays a child services kind of person. And she's going to investigate this woman who locked her kids in like this this closet with all these strange markings on it. Well, you do find out she was just trying to protect her kids from La Llorona. Yeah, which is, yeah, she, you know, she's doing what she's got to do. Yeah, she's doing what she's got to do, and she's trying to just kind of, hopefully, she passes over them. You know, that's what that's what it looks like. What she was kind of thinking. Um, it goes into further uh, investigation as far as, as as that family because uh, she ends up actually taking that the kids away from her, and they actually send her, I think, away like. They, they think she's crazy and then they arrest her or something like that for neglect yeah they do an investigation and by doing the investigation they, they take the kids away and put them in like a foster care, care foster care and yeah bad choice bad choice yeah so um the kids are actually staying up one night in foster care they can't sleep or i think one of the kids actually wakes up hearing a noise yeah i forget it's been a while and one of the kids was actually sleepwalking but he was actually being like kind of he was possessed that. by la Arona. And uh, it, it's a really good scene because you see the kid walking down the hallway. And as the kid comes out of each corner, like he's already at the end of the hallway. And then eventually you just see La Llorona just come out of nowhere and just take him. Yeah, it was super creepy. Uh, and I love the tense, the tenseness of that scene. Because yeah, I, I don't care who you are. It's tense. It's just. <sighs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I think one of the ma major factors of, of this movie was of how tense it was, how much jump scares there were, uh, and how much uh, you were getting scared, not just you in general, but like audiences, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, definitely. It's a, it's a movie where it's 
especially you know we saw it in Dolby, yeah. so the audio's all around you and it's basic. Oh, now you're quoting them. Oh, is that, is that their quote? Dolby gave us some money. <laughs> yeah, so it's for the audio, so the audio's encompassing like, you. Yeah, so um, this was definitely a movie where the face was in the shirt a lot for you. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah. Pet Cemetery, Faith was in the shirt. If you guys don't know by now, Sammy uh, likes to go to movie. When we go to horror movies, he's not a big horror fan to be. Or, okay, I shouldn't say that. He's he's kind of forced to be a horror fan now doing this podcast. But he has this thing where every time you go to a horror movie, he's not a big horror movie watcher. So he does this constantly, getting ready for the scene. Yeah, I'm just like this the entire film. I'm like, <laughs> just getting ready for the scene, and then when he, you know, it's something. It's like it's the funniest thing ever. And sometimes I'll throw in a scare extra, and he gets mad and. It's funny. Yeah, because I'm waiting for the scare on the screen. You hear, like, the music build. There's just tension. It's just boom. Like, you're turning, especially in that one scene, like, they're turning corners. Like, is she going to just pop out of nowhere? Yeah, so um, we then go on. Where do we go on from there? Well, uh, well then, then, then um, they find the kids in the river. In the Yeah, the L.A. River, because this movie takes place in L.A. Uh, they find him in the LA River, and Patricia kind of loses it, and you know I was trying to protect him from La Llorona. Yeah, because yeah. they because they call uh, damn, how do I figure her name already? They call Anna's character. Yeah. To come. She brings her kids with her. Yeah. Well, she starts seeing stuff, doesn't she? No, no, she hasn't started seeing things yet. I don't think. Or was it the kids that started? Seeing well, no. Stuff? So she brings, no. she brings the kids. In that the was car. the first. That was the first encounter with. The yeah, kids. that's when. The, yeah. The boys. So. Are- they're investigating stuff, and the kid hears uh, La Llorona crying. Chris. Yeah, and he goes over to investigate like a stupid white kid. He, you know, he goes over and see what's going on, um, and then he ends up finding out that, of course, uh, she's right there in the alley, and she looks up at him and goes towards him and like gives him like the curse mark. Yeah. Which that's a, pr- a pretty important thing in this movie. It, like, it, it's basically saying if you get this mark, that that's how you know she's coming after you. Yeah. She's creepy too. And that was a good sequence with the, her in the car and stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. The car scene was really cool. Yeah, because really that good. was you guys. Like, she's just going all over the place. Yeah, if you guys seen the tr- the first trailer they ever came out with this movie, it's them in the car and they're just uh, they're trying to keep it the doors locked and the windows up, and she pops out. That's basically the sequence, and it's a really good sequence actually overall. But then the kid ends up going home. He gets scared. He won't tell his mom what's wrong. No. And we start seeing kind of signs of Lyrona popping up. Everywhere around the house, trying to taunt that kid. Yeah, she starts taunting him, and then and then she like, goes after the daughter. The daughter, which they, which you also see in the trailer with another the, thing you see in the, the trailer umbrella. where the 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 rent scene, and the, yeah, the umbrella scene was pretty cool. Too. Well, yeah, you see the umbrella scene before you see the rent scene. Yeah, and then one of the most famous, yeah, another one famous in the trailer was the rent scene scene, and then when Lyron is trying to drown the little girl, which is so cool. Well, yeah, that was a, an interesting one. Um, because that's I when think that's when the sun finally starts opening up. Like, hey, this is what yeah. happened. Yeah, and then that's when Linda Cardellini's character, um, she starts seeing stuff herself. Yeah, which is so the way like Lyrona is like controlling that house is so kind of cool. like taunting them. Yeah, just like slamming doors. Yeah, it's kind of it reminds you of a Conjuring movie in a way. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the way that like the nun in Conjuring Two really controls the house and like yeah. uses her. What is that word? Supernatural powers, I guess. Yeah, to kind of just to mess with the them. family. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, I liked how they kind of they. It felt like a Conjuring movie. That's what they put that aspect in the movie, and I, that's what I liked about it. But then Linda Cardellini goes over to Father Perez. Um, earlier in the movie, we see uh, Raymond Cruz's character. If you guys don't know who Raymond Cruz is, actually, one of his most infamous roles was in Breaking Bad. Um, he played Tuco, the meth uh, drug lord. Um, and he was a really good actor. He actually came back and reprised his role in Better Call Saul. But uh, Raymond Cruz, he plays uh, he plays Rafael, uh, Rafael o- Olvera. Olvera, and he was a former priest. And he actually quit the um, the church so he can go and pursue another work that he said he explains in the movie that he can go continue God's work uh, another way. Yeah, because with the Catholic Church comes the red tape. The and red what tape. you can can't do, and he wants. Yeah, he knows that because, because yeah, if you want to perform in in the Catholic Church, if you want to perform an exorcism, you have to go straight to the Vatican. Yeah. and get an approval. Now that takes a long time. Yeah, and as far and as long as that takes, stuff from with the the possessed uh being can be getting worse. Well, and not just that the the he uses uh alternative tactics that probably wouldn't be. 
Allowed, allowed yeah. Like uh, he uses, I think he said he mixes science with um, religion or something. Religion, yeah. Which I think when you're when you when you're like I think I don't think Catholics really look at science because science believe in different things that Catholics do and stuff like that. So he what he uses his methods for is he uses like different powders and and herbs and stuff like that that kind of help. Yeah, a little bit more natural things. A little bit more natural things, exactly. But we do see him, and he he's uh, earlier in the in the thing when the kids have the funeral, he is there performing blessings and stuff for the kids yeah. and stuff, which I thought was a pretty cool scene, uh, just to kind of get an idea of who he was and what he does. Um, we then we then see uh, Linda Carlini's character. She goes to uh, Father Perez and talks to her about La Llorona. Yeah. She said, "Me and my kids." we this force is taunting us we don't know what to do and then he does say this he goes this force is not going to stop following you no matter where you go yeah like they're like can we stay here in the church and he's like no nah, that's yeah. not gonna help he goes it ain't gonna help because you have the mark of uh la Llorona on you doesn't matter where you are she's gonna still trying to find you but there is one there is a couple people that i know can help which of course is referencing the Lawrence. But prior to that, he mentions the fact that he's seen an evil force like this before, and you do see him the in the Annabelle doll. Well, that's a quick little tie-in, which I thought was really cool. And then, of course, he talks about the Warrens, saying, I could contact them, but knowing them, they're going to take a while, so there's no point for that. Um, we then see, of course, he tells them, he goes, there's one other person I can uh, refer you to, and, of course, that comes back to uh, Raphael, and they go down to his shop. At first, he's kind of in very denial, like, yeah, yeah I can't no, help you. No, no, not me. Wrong guy. Yeah, he, I can't help you and stuff like that. And then we actually see that he sees the mark on them, and he goes, okay, I, I think I can do something. We'll go try it. Well, I think it's because the girl begs the little girl. Uh, yeah, he name? sees the little girl. Uh, Sam. I, I know. Sam, yeah, Samantha begs him, and um, he ends up kind of changing his mind, so then they ended up going back to the house and performing a bunch of rituals and stuff like that. Which is... That the, all of the, the night scene is so cool. That scene in the house is amazing. From when they go into the pool, that was pretty cool. Yeah, but even before that, the way that they're just preparing the house. And they're preparing the house. They're putting all the stuff, all the like the red, the tree that I think that was like there when her kids died or something like well, yeah, that. Yeah, that's what they have on the uh, the cross. I think the cross, but then those ashes that he puts around the door and stuff. Yeah. That's from the tree as well. This tree, I guess, is where she either died no, it's or where something. Where she buried the kids. Where she buried the kids. The tree. But that's like the tree. That it's like a, it's like redwood. Yeah, it was like the only thing present when when her kids died. Yeah, yeah. and it's late. And it, so he he took that and he made it into like kind of like a like a sawdust in a way. Can yeah. I say that? I guess that's what it really I mean, was. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Grind so then he yeah he ends up using that and they actually try to confront La Llorona. and that's actually like I said like you said that's one of the probably one of the best scenes uh, in the movie because they're in that circle and you're seeing her walking down the stairs and it's stuff. Like, Ooh, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. And then, like, they're in the circle and then it just goes completely dark and then you just see the drip happening over oh, there yeah, in the circle. Them, yeah. And she just takes the mom and shoves them away and then yeah. she takes the son upstairs, I believe. Or was it? It was somewhere. I and, I, and I remember she takes the girl into the pool and they throw some holy water and that kind of gets her to until they can get back in. We, I think, I think, I think the, the the pool scene happens after the doll, doesn't it? After like, the doll goes outside. That's right. So she has this doll, Samantha, the the little girl, and she's like in love with this doll or something like that. She's like obsessed with it. Yeah. And uh, what happens is they they lock Lyodona out. They put the ashes and stuff, and she can't get in. So she's kind of like almost like a vampire. She can't get in without kind of like being invited in. Yeah. So they gotta unbox those ashes and stuff like that. And so what happens is the doll ends up outside on the porch, and of course the girl being the girl, oh, no, no. So Lyorona takes the doll and yeah. then places it there on the porch. Yeah, and which is so smart. Of, of course the girl, little girl Samantha being Samantha, she freaking um, grabs, she tries to She's reach like, I out it, I got and, it. and not break the barrier because Raphael did tell him don't break the barrier no matter what because yeah. she can't come in. Yeah. And she she breaks the barrier and and then that's when of course Lyrona comes in grabs the girl and goes out to the pool. Yeah. yeah. At, that At that point, we see Raphael and um, uh, of course Linda Cardellini's character yeah. and the and the son, and um, they all run out to the pool. Yeah. They uh, she and runs in and jumps into the pool. She does like an amazing dive like she was in the Olympics. Yes. It was it was amazing, but she runs in into the pool, and then from there she uh, rescues her daughter. 
they throw holy water in. Uh, and then the, I think the last encounter with Lyarona was when the kids are actually up in the attic. Yeah, hiding. after Patricia, I believe that's her name, comes yeah, she in comes and in. Just destroys the barrier. Yeah, destroys the barrier because she wants. Like, I'm praying, yeah, not to God, but to Lyarona that she you takes took kids. my kids. I mean, yeah. that she takes yours. Yeah, so just evil and evil. So beautiful so. to watch. That that happens and. Um, that was my, that's probably my favorite thing, like that little, just little exchange. Yeah, because she hasn't been like gunpoint and stuff like that. Yeah. And Raphael's, um, he's knocked down and stuff like that. And uh, Anna is like right there. She's trying to get her kids, everything settled and stuff like that. Her kids are actually up in the attic hiding. And that's when we see Lyrona again. And we see her real quick in her human form uh, as just a regular woman again. And at that point, she looks at, uh, of course, because I think at one point they snatched the necklace off of her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They grabbed, yeah, they grabbed the, the necklace, necklace in the pool. I think. Yeah. yeah so he, he, they had that, and they were giving it back, and that's when she kind of like for a second has a heart, but then she looks at herself in the mirror, and then she goes straight back to Lyrona. Yeah. And uh, that's actually one of the funniest scenes I think when um, Anne and Raphael come out because Patricia actually lets Anne go. Yeah. To go get her kids because she kind of realizes like, well, shit, I already lost mine. She shouldn't lose her. Yeah. She finally has that like come coven. Yeah. Place. So. So. Uh, at that point, they all go up to the attic, and um, yeah, they they end up, uh, of course, fighting La Arona, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good a good scene. That's when, of course, um, Raphael throws the cross to um, Anne, and they do they stab her with it or something like that. Yeah, because that's like the the last bit of the tree that that can actually kill her and stuff yeah. like that. So they end up stabbing her, and she kind of like burst up into like flames or something like that. Yeah. And she goes away, and their marks go away and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, one of the funny things was um, earlier in the movie, Samantha was like, "Is this some sort of when they were doing the egg thing?" Yeah. Remember the blood and stuff? Yeah. He goes, "Is this like a ma oh I've seen this as a magic trick and stuff like that?" And then that actually bleeds and stuff, and he's like, "Ta da!" <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny because they thought it was all bullshit, but when the egg actually bled, they were like, "Oh, okay, that's real." Yeah. Um, and when of course. Uh, they kill Lyrona with the thing. He brings that joke again. He goes, ta-da. Kind of like for a comic relief after. But uh, right after that, they it kind of goes back. Everything goes back to normal. Um, and, you know, Raphael leaves and stuff like that. And, and the kids were like, were you scared? Were you scared? He's like, yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah, another comic relief. I love his freaking attitude in this movie. It was great. It was hilarious. Were you scared? Uh, no. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he ends up leaving and he, like, he, like, you know, they thank him so much for everything, and I thought that was really cool. Um, but then the last shot we see of this movie, of course, is the puddle on the floor, where it's, it's famous for Lyrona being in their presence. Yeah. And you're just, you're thinking because this is how James Wan does every Conjuring and Annabelle movie when he produces them. It always, for some reason, ends with like, okay, Conjuring one ended with that box, that music box. Yeah. And in the reflection you saw like like a demon of some sort early on in the movie. Yeah. And when the box opened up and the reflection was going, you were just waiting for to see something and then the movie just went to black. Yeah. I think they did the same thing with the conjuring too. Yeah, I don't uh, remember. I haven't seen that one in a cool minute. Yeah, and then they did it with Annabelle of course. Like you see the Annabelle doll and you think something's gonna happen and then it just ends. cuts, yeah. Yeah. So they're famous for doing that in these movies, which was really cool. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed in this movie, of course, like I said, was the way Lyarona looked. I think uh, if they didn't makeup on her, it was really good makeup. Um, if they mixed makeup with CGI, it still looked really good. Yeah, I can understand doing CGI with her mouth because the way it opened up. Yeah, but I think the makeup portion of it was amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree. Her like demonic form was pretty cool. I mean, I think they could have done a little bit more to make her look a little. She's supposed to be the prettiest woman in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I think I mean, overall I think she's, she's a good-looking woman. But yeah, uh, final verdict of the movie, Sammy. Uh, I think I, I think I'm gonna stick to my guns on this one and say it was a good movie. It yeah. was a good watch, <laughs> but once again, I still would have liked it to be a little bit more, more Mexico-y. Yeah, Mexico-y. America. Like if they did like a little pueblo or little like pueblo, <laughs> Paulito. A little pueblo or a little ranchero up in there, or a little. Uh, Little Maria, little little Maria is running out. Like it would have been really cool if they did like this movie, like the first one, being like in Mexico. Yeah. And then like that family coming to the U.S. and the curse not broken. Yeah. Or like the curse spreading to somewhere else. Yeah. For sure. Um, with that being said, uh, I think it was really good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. 
Yeah, I definitely don't think it deserves the audience score it has. Yeah, I think it can. Like, I, honestly, like a sixty or seventy percent is where it really should be at. Yeah, I, I don't think like a thirty-eight. A thirty-eight, yeah, because there were some good scares in there. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are complaining that it was just jump scare after jump scare, which is true. But that, like, that, if you that, actually look at it, there was some like it. There was a, a plot, and there was yeah. character development. Yeah, but that just comes to show that you can't please everyone. Yeah, and the cinematography was nice. Yeah, it was very good. There was a lot of one shots that you were calling. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's a cool one shot. I, I'm a fan of one shots. Yeah, especially like I think during the night scene, there was like a really cool like one shot. Yeah, of like her so. coming down the stairs. Yeah, like, it was going to the family and just kind of like. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of one shots. Um. So that's going to do it. Before we go, uh, like I said, quick shout out to uh, Evil Ash Lives on Instagram. He made me that glove. He's one of my coworkers, and I won't say uh, who, what his real name is just to, uh, just for the just for the fact to protect his identity. But uh, follow him on Instagram, Evil Ash Lives, and uh, message him if you want one of these Freddy Krueger gloves. They are screen replicas uh, fit to uh, Robert England's hand. Robert um, England. So if you have small hands like Robert England did, you can squeeze into that. Me personally – I am just using it for display options. Yeah, because it looks amazing. I'm gonna buy a fake hand, but the way I have it positioned right now, it looks pretty dope. But I'm gonna buy a fake hand very eventually. Oh, or you go to the fence item when someone walks in that door. Yeah. So uh, go ahead, and if you if you're interested in buying one of these gloves, he'll give you a good deal on them. He makes them. Uh, he's a perfectionist, so he's gonna make them freaking amazing. Like, look at this thing. This is awesome, dude. Yeah, it's pretty epic. It looks look the exact same thing from the movie. It's awesome. Yep. He takes his time doing them, and he does, and he has fun doing them, and yeah, that's one of his hobbies. Um, also, shout out to Shutter. If you want a 14 day free trial, use promo code Mindless. Uh, of course, they have a couple good stuff on there right now. They had a lot of the Halloween movies on there. Oh, did they? Yeah, from Halloween, I think one all the way to. Four or five. Dang, do they have H2O? No. I'm not going that far. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they have a lot of the Halloween movies on there and a lot of uh, amazing other content. So if you want to go check out Shutter and sign up using promo code MINDLESS for a 14-day free trial, that's an extra seven days than they already give you. So if you like the service, I guarantee you, you're going to like it. Do we have any other movies coming up? Other movies coming up. We're going to do next week uh, Extremely Evil, Shockingly Vile, and what was it? Disturbing or something? The Ted Bundy biopic that Zach Efron. Ted Bundy Efron, biopic. That's that Zach nice. Efron's uh, coming out with. And, uh, yeah, I want to do a podcast with Fosto pretty soon, so I'm going to hit him up on that. Yeah, we're going to bring Fosto. The homeboy Fosto. So that should be fun. Um, but, yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the Mile and Sword podcast, episode 36. We're on our way to 40. 36. Yes. Look at this guy over here with the Spanish. Yeah. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of the Mile and Sword podcast, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.